Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series and our Crazy Leela series. Yes, this is the channel where you have to be at to see games with Queen Odds analysed. And this is a great little game by Leela White against uh, a player rated 23.36 on uh, Lee Chess. So pretty good player to give Queen Odds to. And, uh, well, just see what uh, Leela makes of it. You might, uh, your eyes might be sort of jumping out of your head at, uh, at the current position. Yes, Leela did play 2G4. It's a five minutes plus three seconds increment uh, blitz game. So very reasonable increment for, um, for, uh, for black. So D4, Knight F6, G4. What on earth is Leela doing? Well, it would never have occurred to me, but Leela's worked out with uh, all the training that... I mean, the best way to play with queen odds is just to have plenty of open lines and maximum activity for the pieces. And you might think that the, the, the uh, opponent's queen might be able to do something about that, but Leela's worked out all sorts of ways of uh, of just holding on and just creating threats. And, um, you know, I think we saw in the match against David Maycock, you know, he's a very strong bullet player, 2,800, um, and, you know, playing amazingly fast. But somehow the patterns that Leela was creating, you know, were just, you know, really just, you know, causing a lot of mental anguish in order to work out what is Leela doing, what, oh, where are the traps coming from? And um, yeah, I mean, this is basically what Leela's doing, creating chaos, creating activity, and then uh, just striking at the least expected moment. Black played knight takes g4, nothing wrong with that. Knight c3, d5, f3, knight f6, e4. And uh, Leela's actually offering uh, more pawns, right? Because after d takes c4, the pawn on d4 would be hanging. I guess Leela would play bishop e3 to cover the pawn on d4 and get ready for quick queenside castling. So black decides to play it tight at the back. You're a queen and a pawn up after all. Plays e6, bishop e3, bishop b4, and now e5, knight fd7. So well, we've got some sort of uh, French structure where uh, white's missing a g-pawn and uh, also a queen as well, which is not inconsiderable. So knight e2, c5, rook g1. Just um, using that uh, open file, looking to create squares simply g6 bishop g5 that's quite decent uh, attacking the queen will be stopping the king from you know getting out of the um of the center queen b6 castles bishop takes c3 and now b takes c3 so um yeah i mean if you you know ask me what on earth is happening here i just say oh, well i have no idea i just resign as white and that's pretty much what the engines are saying too but Leela's got uh, ideas and Leela's thinking, how can I uh, open up the position? How can I create imbalance? Leela's actually got a plan. Uh, knight c6, f4, takes, takes, queen a5. I mean, you can't really fall black. Black's just uh, looking to uh, go after the pawn and deliver mate, basically. But rook g3 from uh, Leela. So that's a, a handy little uh, thing. The rook's uh, able to come along the third rank and um, and uh, deal with any threats. And after queen takes a2, then f5. Yeah, more pawns being given up. Anything to, um, uh, you know, to, to, to create openings in the position. And, you know, black's just got to choose the right one. And, uh, you know, ev everyone's got an advantage and a disadvantage. And, uh, you know, obviously with uh, black, you really don't want to give white any chances at all. But, yeah, somehow you've always got the feeling that Leela's going to find something. So after G takes F5, that's quite decent. You know, trying to keep the, uh, the center solid. Well, Leela played knight C3. Nicely protected by the rook on g3, queen a5, and now knight b5, and with heading with knight d6. And, you know, because we've got this bishop, the king's not able to escape. And now that we've opened the g-file, bishop h6 will be coming in. I mean, it's crazy, right? I mean, just, uh, you're just, yeah, Leela's just creating uh, trouble wherever she is. So um, h6 and now bishop f4. Was kind of expecting bishop h4, but uh, bishop f4 played by Leela just to uh, support knight d6 and uh, support the pawn. I think maybe Leela was possibly thinking that the black might sacrifice on e5, so wanting to uh, prevent that. And after knight b6, then rook a3. Switch of... Uh, of um, uh, of angle really you know just uh, i guess just trying to stop black from having any anything too dangerous uh, against the white king so chasing the uh, the queen away bishop d2 queen e7 
and now switching back. So Leela's going to, you know, come with knight d6 and rook g7 now. Yeah, these constant switching of um, of uh, of angle are you know are quite noticeable. Um, I mean, you see it in the in the play of uh, of neural nets of all modern engines actually. Yeah, that they're able to switch play from one side of the board to the other. But uh, quite striking to to be doing this when you're a queen and uh, what is it two three pawns down. So black plays knight c4. I mean, this is all fairly sensible. Takes takes. Exchange off some more pieces. Knight d6, king d7, and rook g7. Finally, Leela's creating a, a few threats here, but uh, I mean, the engines are just resigning after a couple of moves from here, so it's not looking great for uh, for white. Rook f8, and bishop takes h6. And here, black kind of missed a, um, a little threat here that uh, that white actually had and played the move b5. Looks quite uh, natural. I mean, you're looking at it, you say, well, you know, I mean, we're just going to develop the bishop and uh, if you go something like rook h7 looking for bishop f8 you know we'll play bishop a6 we'll just take off I mean you know nothing at all happening right well Leela played the move bishop g5 and it's one of those oopsie moments where you say oh my goodness I'm, I'm actually losing my queen here um, because uh, yeah it's uh, actually got no escape square whatsoever it can happen, right? I mean, uh, we we saw you know a reasonable number of those moments in um, in the match, um, uh, you know the uh, the Queen odds match that we saw, uh, uh, you know a few days ago. But um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it can happen, and you just got to to deal with it really. Um, in actual fact, you know what Black did here was play the move Queen takes d6, and after e takes d6, King d6. Well, it's a little bit embarrassing. You've lost your um, your Queen, but I mean, you've got a piece. And uh, and three pawns extra. Um, and I mean, I look at the position. And I think, well, where's the danger somehow? You know, where on earth is Black going to have any danger to face in this position? And I think that's really, you know, um, what what players are underestimating a little bit. Until I think you play a number of games against Leela, and then you suddenly, you know, you're suddenly scared of everything, which is maybe going the, you know, uh, too far the other way. Um, I think that David in, in the match the other day, you know, by the end of it, he was um, I think he was getting quite tired. It's a very big mental effort to do this. But he was also feeling quite nicely. The, you know, Leela's bluffing, Leela's bluffing. I've just I mustn't uh, mustn't believe it. I've just got to keep on attacking and go for it somehow. But yeah, it's a, it's a big effort to do somehow. I mean, if, if you ask me, I'd be thinking I have no idea how, uh, how I'm going to do it. There's nothing I can do in this position. But Leela just uh, goes for it. H4. Bishop a6 from, uh, from black, so connecting the rooks. The only thing is this bishop's a little bit passive, but okay, you know, it's uh, good to get the pieces active. And now h5, knight e7, h6. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're just sort of thinking, well, actually, yeah, there is that past h pawn there. It's a little bit uh, annoying, maybe. The engines, uh, to be fair, you know, just want to play the move knight d5, which would be a really good move, I think. And after uh, h7, you know, they're uh, looking at moves like uh, B4 or even maybe a move like F6, followed by Rook H8. You know, you, you keep it tight at the back. It's the d danger's never over, but you're you're really kind of controlling things. And your king is actually quite safe, you know, in that square. And, uh, you know, you're going to look to play B4 and C3 and activate. And, you know, if you have to, even if you had to give up both rooks for uh, a rook and pawn somehow, you'd still be really, really good, right? Uh, have amazing compensation for the exchange. So... You know, that's the kind of thing you've got to do. But of course, when things are happening fast, you know, you're getting nervous and uh, you want to uh, to try and keep control. Um, Black played um, knight g6. And now a really fantastic move from Leela. I have to say that I hadn't seen it at all. Bishop d2. And, um, you know, you're only looking at bishop f6 and you think that's fine. But now somehow the, the angle is being changed. The bishop's coming to b4. You can't stop that now uh, because the knight's over on g6. Um, actually, when the bishop's on b4, it's going to make that bishop on a6 passive. Um, and um, uh, yeah, you're attacking the rook on h8 and you still got this past h pawn. You know, it's not it's not fatal yet. It's, there's nothing fatal to it yet. But, you know, that's worrying somehow. You know, it's 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 not at all what you're expecting. You thought you were completely in control and now danger is coming from another side. So black played king d5, bishop b4. And yeah, you know, Black was obviously thinking, yeah, but I don't want to allow Bishop F8 and then H7, Rook G8. You know, I don't want to allow this. 
So Black played maybe a slightly strange move. M might have been a, a misclick, I'm not sure, but uh, Rook H8 is, is more natural somehow to, uh, you know, to try and um, uh, hit the pawn on H6. But Black played Rook G8 and White played Rook F7. And now Black played Rook, Rook H8 again. It's quite striking to see that, you know, um, one of the engines, uh, I think it was Torch, was just looking to play C3 and B4 here, you know, get the lines open, get your bishop active, you know, because uh, which just shows, you know, slight measure of panic from the uh, from the engines or at least the feeling that you do need to start getting active now, you know, um, but black played rook h8 and uh, rook d7 was played king e4. It's obviously a little bit scary to go back. I mean, you, you get checked king over here, the bishop's passive, the king's on, on the rank and, uh, you know, the white rook's taking and, uh, you know, this one's uh, loose. It's a little bit uh, scary to play. I mean, you could even just start giving checks checks if you wanted to make a draw somehow. So uh, king has to go to e4 and it's still minus 3.00, but um, so still very, very good. But um, the point is now that after d5, black's got to find a very, very tricky move here. Um, because um, if you don't find this really excellent move and uh, a few excellent moves after, then then the position is starting to turn. I mean, bishop c8 is what the engines want to play. I mean, basically, they don't want to allow any checks from the back. So they're trying to uh, to cover. And after rook d6, well, the engines were looking at a5 and then f4. You know, you're just going to try and give your king a, an escape square here somehow. And, uh, you know, uh, you can sort of run around the pawn, which is quite a nice little uh, technique there. And uh, and uh, it'll be very hard for white to catch. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, this is quite complicated stuff and certainly not your, your initial reaction. Black played e takes d5, and now it's only minus 0 0.5 for uh, for white. So, I mean, the whole queen odds has disappeared, you know, and the engine games are ending in draws now after uh, after this. So the engines just think it's equal. And obviously, Torch and Stockfish come into their own because uh, with a slight disadvantage, yeah, you start getting all the tactics now. So h7 from uh, from Leela, just keeping the position as it is. And I mean, you know, you look at the position and uh, you start to, you really do start seeing all of a sudden you start seeing the, the compensation for, uh, you know, a piece and three pawns. I mean, this one is out of play. This one is loose. This king is in the middle. You know, I mean, um, there's all sorts of, you know, moves that white can play, right, to to attack loose things. I mean, even rook d6, forking the two. And yeah, the black rooks aren't getting active, right? I mean, you know, this pawn on h7 is tying down the rook on h8 and also covering g8. So really so difficult. I mean, black played rook d8, which looks natural to attack the rook and defend this pawn. And we're at 0 0.00. So the engines just think, yeah, you know, finished uh, winning attempts. You just need to make a draw now. Rook g7 and... Um, yeah, black played knight f4 and now it's 5.74 you know virtually force mate in actual fact um the only way for black to play was to try and uh, give some material back with bishop c8 rook g6 rook h7 you're covering the e6 square that's the key thing and um well i, I mean actually white can just give uh, a perpetual check if he particularly feels like doing it and uh, he can try all sorts of other things if he wants to as well but that was the only way by now, the only defense, because after knight f4, I was I saw this live again and uh, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, it is going wrong, isn't it? <laughs> rook e7 check, rook f1, uh, king g2, we go rook takes f4 and we're just threatening rook g7 and uh, the king will be inexorably uh, shunted over to the rook to the h file. Black played king g4, rook g7 check, king h4, rook h1, knight h3. And now it's your choice, really. Do you want bishop e7 check or do you want bishop e1 check? Leela went for bishop e7 check and black resigned because after king h5, rook h3 is checkmate. I mean, just an amazing mating net there without the queens, right? Without the queens. And um, and it all turned around so fast. Eh? Um, I mean, um, you know, by by the stage white plays d5, I think, you know, the human players odds on to uh, to lose that basically. Um but, um, you know, the amazing thing, you know, for me in this game was that, um, you know, it is how it 
tends to happen right you know you can always have an oops as um as a, a human player you know you just get caught out and say oh my goodness this happened but you say okay you know um i'll just get rid of it no more attacking chances for um for a black actually this worked out for white uh, you know actually this worked out quite well right i lost material but i uh, it sort of forced me to give up material to break the attack but how leela manages to to get some attack and in particular this brilliant move bishop d2 switching the whole the whole um, uh, angle of attack again. I mean, already Leela had done that in the opening just to uh, deal with the mating threats, chase the queen back, may try and make some sort of attack. But this one is is really horrible because Black's got, you know, got some quite complicated, uh, um, you know, decisions to make here. And it just ends up being just way too much somehow, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, just moves flowing from everywhere and before you know it you know your your positions are a mess and your king's in the center and being chased by just three white pieces but just being chased uh you know just uh, to mate it's absolutely incredible so there we are i hope you're enjoying these uh these you know these queen odds games i've got a, a few more um i mean actually i could have you know i could easily pick 20 or 30 simply uh, i'm just watching them all the time and just uh, you know just open mouth and astonishment uh, to see the things that leela is doing um but well got to got to make a selection as well and uh, i've got some great knight uh, and rook ones as well so uh, yeah do keep uh, do keep tuned on the channel i've also got some uh, reengineering the chess classics things that i'm uh, brewing at the moment lots of stuff too much stuff to uh, to look at and uh, obviously with the world championship uh, if uh, something there comes up that i find interesting that the engines find interesting i'll uh, do that as well so thanks very much for watching. Do keep your eyes peeled for more videos. Give a like, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying it and hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.